This course is about multivariable functions and how the tools of calculus, integrals, and derivatives can be used in this new, more complicated setting. However, before jumping straight into the material, I have to make sure that the environment is well understood. We need to be able to describe two- and three-dimensional space mathematically so that we can talk about the behavior of these multivariable functions. Two- and three-dimensional space are described by vectors, and I imagine that most of you have at least a little bit of experience with vectors, either from high school mathematics, physics, or from linear algebra. However, since neither physics nor linear algebra are actually prerequisites for this course, I'm going to spend the first week setting the stage by carefully defining vectors and their operations. Even for those who know something about vectors, the videos this week may be useful to refine your understanding and become familiar with the particularities of the notation and the definitions I will use in this course. What is a vector? It is a list of numbers. In the context of vectors, ordinary numbers are called scalars. And so a vector is just a finite ordered list of scalars. Vectors can be written horizontally or vertically, with commas to separate the entries in the horizontal notation. Even though I used vertical vectors in linear algebra, for those of you who've taken that course with me, in this course I'll use the horizontal notation. The numbers in a vector are called its entries, its coordinates, or its components. It's annoying to have three terms for this, but all three terms are commonly used. Real Euclidean space, or Cartesian space, of dimension n is the collection of all vectors of some fixed length n. In this course, we basically only need to worry about two- and three-dimensional space, R2 and R3. R2 is the familiar Cartesian plane. Vectors have two entries, and those entries indicate position along the horizontal x and vertical y axes. To be extremely explicit, the vector 3, 6 is 3 units over an x and 6 units up in y, and likewise for other points shown on this diagram. The center of the plane is the vector 0, 0, which is called the origin, and it is also called the zero vector. R3 is three-dimensional Cartesian space. Vectors have three entries, and those entries indicate position along three axes, x, y, and z. Usually, the x and y axes form a horizontal plane, and the z-axis is shown vertically. The vector 1, 3, 2 is 1 unit over an x, 3 units over an y, and 2 units up in z. To finish this video, I want to talk about two tricky subtleties with vectors, both of which are very important for how vectors are used to describe two- and three-dimensional space. First, Vectors can be understood as either points or directions. The vector 1, 4 can simply indicate that position on the plane, 1 unit over and 4 units up. However, the vector 1, 4 can also indicate the arrow starting at the origin that points in the direction 1 unit over and 4 units up. Vectors serve both roles frequently. When working with vectors, we often implicitly switch between these two understandings without necessarily pointing it out. And a major part of becoming familiar with vectors is getting used to this double nature in switching. Finally, in addition to their role as directions from the origin, vectors can also be used as local directions. That is, from some point, 2, 2 in the diagram, I may want to describe movement in a direction. To use that, I use vectors, but I momentarily pretend that 2, 2 is the origin for those vectors. This makes them local direction vectors. Again, this use of local direction vectors is very common and becomes implicit. I won't necessarily remind you every time that a vector is being used as a local direction. Becoming familiar with this is also part of becoming familiar with vectors.